Hey everybody, this is Liz with Connecting Threads, and I'm here today to show you a tutorial about how to make oven mitts. Now I have to admit, I've been a little obsessed with these. I've been making a lot of them recently, and I think pretty much everybody in either side of my family is gonna be getting these for Christmas. Now making them is extremely easy, and there's lots of really fun ways that you can customize it to your needs. So we've got a couple different versions of oven mitts today. You can go ahead and make it plain where you just use one facing of fabric. So I use two fat quarters for this one, which I think is really easy. So if you've got a couple extra fat quarters lying around, this is an awesome way to get rid of them. But I also wanted to show you a couple of different fun ways that you can make some funky oven mitts. So this is using charm packs and I created a whole bunch of half square triangles and sewed them together. And then this is using some two and a half inch strips that I sewed together and turned into oven mitts. So there's tons of different ways that you can customize these and they are so easy. You can make a whole bunch in one weekend, which is what I've been doing recently. So if you ever came to my house or ever meet me, you should ask how many oven mitts I've made. I think I'm up to about 45 at this point. So let's go ahead and go over what you're gonna need to make oven mitts today. The first thing that you're gonna need is your fabric. Now, if you have a fat quarter stack, this is one of the best ways to use it. The template that I'm gonna be showing you in just a minute fits at least two of these on a fat quarter. And so it's really, really great if you've got, for instance, the new Connecting Threads collection, which is the Chateau d'Avignon. These are really, really beautiful. We're gonna be sewing one of these up today. And fat quarters are one of those where sometimes you'll use half a stack and you've got a couple extras lying around. Great use for those. Now, the other thing that you're gonna need is the template. And this is what you can download on our website. And I wanted to talk to you about this for a second because I created this template and you'll notice that there's a couple different sizes on it. So not everybody has, I have gigantic hands. I, one of my professors when I was younger told me I should play the cello because I have long fingers and large hands. So most of the time I need gloves that are large or an extra large, but a lot of the people that I know are out there have smaller hands. And so what I did for this template is I created two different sizes. The large size is gonna be on the outside. If your hand is a little bit smaller, you can cut down to this smaller size right here. The other thing that I added was a little line down here if you wanted to shorten your oven mitt. So I actually pulled out the two sizes so that you can see them. So it's a little bit easier for you to understand. So you'll notice that the one on top is gonna to be the smallest size. It's quite a bit shorter and it's quite a bit more narrow than the one right here, which is gonna be a little bit larger. Everybody has different hand sizes and some people might want the shorter one, some people might want the longer one. And I'm a big fan of making sure the templates have good sizing. So you're gonna print out your template from connectingthreads.com, cut down to the size that you want, whether you want it narrower or shorter. And then you're also going to need Insulbrite. Now Insulbrite is a type of batting that is specific for heat in any way whatsoever. So you'll notice that it has on the cover, it's got oven mitts. It's also got a little takeout container um, you'll also notice over here, it's got a little curling iron on the front. So this is really, really great. It's an insulated thermal lining that is great for keeping things hot or keeping things cold. Insulbrite is absolutely fantastic. And let me tell you, this is a gigantic piece of batting. On one Insulbrite, I have made about 11 <laughs> oven mitts. So <laughs> you can really go buck wild with this, which I think is really great. So if you buy one of these, it's gonna be great for making Christmas presents. So these are the things that you're gonna need, your Insulbrite, your fabric, and your template. And then outside of that, you're gonna want your basic sewing supplies. So let's go ahead and get started and make some oven mitts. So the first thing that you're gonna need to do is cut out all of the pieces using your template. Now, this is the printer paper piece that I printed out. And you'll notice these are the lines where you can cut down to size if you need to. Um, there's a middle line right here because the template actually has to be printed out on two different pages. And so you'll have to tape it together here. Now printer paper is pretty flimsy. So I highly recommend that you take that template and you trace it out on a thicker piece of, I ended up using some old scrapbook paper, which actually worked out really well. But if you have cardboard or if you have some sort of vinyl template, anything that you wanna cut this out of that's a little bit sturdier, it's gonna make a really big difference. So you're going to need two outer fabrics. So this is gonna be my outside of my template. 
This is going to be my lining. So you're gonna need two lining pieces and then you'll also need two cutouts of insole bright. So you should have six pieces cut out using your template. So two outside, two inside, two insole bright. Now, this is just a plain oven mitt. So I didn't cut out any funky changes to this. This is just cut right out of a fat quarter. If you want to do some strips or some scraps, which I am a big fan of using scraps, let me go ahead and show you what to do if you would like some strips. So we ended up sewing a couple of strips together. These actually came out of the Connecting Threads sewing room scrap bin, which is really awesome. Uh, it's one of the many perks of working here. So these are all just strips together, and then you'll notice I cut it out using the template. So there are two for the outside, so they both are strips. Then we've got two for the lining right here, which are just flat fabric from a fat quarter and then two of insole bright. So however you wanna sew your scraps together, all you need to do is make sure that they're going to be sewn together enough so that you can cut out this template and you're pretty much good to go. So whatever way you choose to cut out all of these different pieces is totally up to you. Whether you wanna do it scrappy or whether you wanna do it just plain right from the fat quarter, but today we're gonna to sew through this scrappy one, mostly because I just love it so much. So this is the one that we're gonna be sewing today. So let's go ahead and move on. The next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna be sewing our insole bright. We are gonna be sewing it to our outside fabric. So the first step is we're gonna be taking whatever outside fabric we have. I'm gonna be sewing these strips together and you're gonna be quilting it on top of a piece of your insole bright. So you're gonna be lining this up on top of your insole bright there. And from here, you're going to want to quilt this. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. If you don't have basting pins, which basting pins are those little safety pins that look kind of bent, these are really great for quilting on your machine. And so we can go through and we can basically pin around. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. If you don't have basting pins, honestly, I just use regular old sewing pins. I didn't have basting pins for the longest time. And so I ended up just taking my pins and running it through every couple of inches. Um, these don't have to be perfect. So don't worry about the fact if things get a little squidgy in between, as long as you pin in a couple of different places, they'll all line up together. Now, there's a ton of different ways that you can actually do the quilting. So I wanted to show you two examples from the oven mitts that I've sewn so you can see the differences between some of the quilting. So for this scrappy mitt, I ended up sewing just every quarter inch up the entire thing. Now, I really liked this brown thread. I thought it played really nicely with this charm pack here that I sewed together. And then on the back side, I used the same thread, but this was kind of a scrappy side. I literally just sewed a whole bunch of little scraps that I had together from the same charm pack. And I just ended up following the lines of some of these scraps. So nothing was really pre-planned. I ended up just having a really good time with this one. Now, if you want something that's a little bit more funky, this one, I ended up taking some metallic thread and I literally just went wild. I ended up sewing a whole bunch of straight lines all over the place and it was really, really fun. I think it turned out really great. On the other side, this was another one of the strips that I sewed together for oven mitts and I ended up just following the edges of the strips with some fun lines. I didn't end up making any measurements. I ended up just sewing some straight lines together to make it look nice and fun. You don't need that much. My only suggestion is that you have some form of quilting every inch or so. That way this will stay together and they won't separate when you're actually using your oven mitt later. So any way that you wanna quilt this, feel free but I ended up just following some of these lines and that's what we're gonna do today. Now, the last thing that you're gonna need to do is pick a thread. For this one, I ended up picking this really lovely purple thread. I thought it would go perfectly with the new Operetta colorways that Patrice had designed for us. So you can choose any type of thread that you want. I highly recommend using cotton thread, especially if you're gonna be using these oven mitts a lot. The cotton thread will withstand the heat a little bit better than the polyester thread. So I really liked using our essential cotton thread, but feel free to use whatever you've got on hand and pick a color that you feel like complements your oven mitts really well. Now let's go ahead and get sewing. 
Now that we're at the quilting phase, you'll notice that I've just gone through and I've taken some pins every couple of rows and gone through and pinned just so that it stays in place. And then for quilting, all I'm gonna do is sew every quarter inch or so up and down the entire oven mitt. Again, you can play around with whatever quilting you want. I want something that's pretty fast and easy, and I think that purple thread that I chose is gonna look really lovely across this. So let me go ahead and I'll sew a couple lines for you just to show you as I pull out my pins as I go. So I'm gonna go ahead and just line this up and go ahead and drop our pressure foot. And through this, we're just gonna sew. Now, I like to take my pins out as I go. Not everybody is like that. It's completely up to you what works best for you. And we'll just keep on sewing. This usually takes probably about 20 minutes for me to do both sides. Remember that you've got two sides, so you're gonna have to do the front and the back of the oven mitt. And then don't forget that you're going to want to reverse at the end of each of these rows really to make sure that this quilting stays in place because we are gonna be sewing these two pieces together. And so doing a little back stitch here is gonna help make sure that these stay in place. So I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna keep on sewing up and down this entire oven mitt from top to bottom. Once you've gone and you've quilted your two pieces, so we've got the outside fabric sewn onto the insel bright. So you'll see, you can see all the stitching right here. I just did a whole bunch of straight lines, super easy, but I think looks really cute with this strip pattern that we did. Now we need to sew the two outside pieces together. And then I'm also gonna bring in the lining because we're also gonna need to sew the lining together. So for the outside pieces, we're going to line them up. It's okay if they're a little squidgy around the edges, it's totally fine. Remember, we're gonna be sewing a quarter inch seam allowance here. And so you don't have to worry about the fact that there might be a little bit of fabric fraying out on the edges. Now for these, you are going to sew all along these edges right here, but you are going to leave the bottom open. So this is where your hand goes in the oven mitt. So you need to make sure that you leave this area open. Now for the lining, We've got our two lining pieces here and right sides together, just like we did with the outside, except this we're gonna sew a little bit differently. So we're gonna make sure we leave the bottom open here. So no sewing where the hand goes in. And then we're gonna sew all along the edge, but you need to make sure that you leave an area open right down here about three inches. So I'll show you what it looks like after I sew it, but you need to make sure that you have a little section right along the edge. And I always like to choose the biggest edge because you get a nice flat area here. We're gonna leave about three inches open and then finish out this seam right here. This is where we're gonna be flipping everything inside out. It will make more sense when we do it, but just make sure you've got that opening right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew all of these together and I'll show you what they look like sewn. For these two outside pieces, we're gonna be sewing about a quarter of an inch along the edge. And then when we get to the area where the thumb meets the hand, I'm gonna show you a little trick for making sure that you have a nice sure seam right there. So let's go ahead and start sewing around the edge. Once you come up to this little divot right here between the thumb and the hand area, you're gonna sew right up to the edge. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of keep on going. And we're gonna sew right about here. We're gonna leave our needle down and we're gonna lift up our presser foot. Then we are going to sew a straight line from where that needle is to about a quarter inch off of this seam right here. So all we're doing is we're reinforcing this little thumb area. If we create a curved seam, sometimes it has a tendency to kind of spread apart a little bit. A straight seam tends to be a little bit stronger. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sew a straight line right along the edge right here. And I like to go and I like to back up and really enforce this seam because this is the area that always ends up falling apart on my oven mitts. And so by reinforcing that seam, I'm gonna have a much stronger thumb for when I put my hand inside that mitt. So we're gonna kind of sew right to about where a quarter inch would be. 
lift up our presser foot and we're lined right up with a quarter inch along the edge of the hand part. So now I'm gonna continue sewing and I'll have a nice firm seam right there. I'm sewing the lining now, and just like before, about a quarter inch off of the edge, I'm going to reinforce my ends. I'm gonna do the same little reinforcement right here where the thumb meets the hand, that straight stitch right there to make sure that that stays nice and firm. And then I will slow down and make sure that I keep my space right here open about three inches for when we're gonna turn it inside out. So let's go ahead and sew this up. Just like before, I've gone ahead and let my needle fall down right here, right where the intersection is. I'm gonna lift up my presser foot. I'm gonna sew a little straight stitch until I hit about the edge right here. Just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and back up and make sure that I reinforce that stitch. So we're gonna go ahead and go back just a smidge, and then we'll go back forward, get to about a quarter inch along that edge, line it up, and then we'll keep on sewing. Now, when you're ready to create this three inch opening, the thing that I will tell you is you wanna make sure that you back stitch quite a bit on these edges because we're going to be pulling open the lining and pulling the entire oven mitt through. You wanna make sure that those seams don't break. So when you're at the edge, just make sure that you reinforce that stitch. I like to do it once or twice and really make sure that that seam is nice and tight because you don't want it to tear. So now I'll lift up my presser foot and I'm just gonna kind of pull forward a little bit until I get about three inches ahead. Drop my presser foot. And then just like we did before, I'm gonna reinforce that edge seam right there. Back stitch once or twice to make sure it's nice and strong. And then I'll go ahead and sew to the end of my lining. And right along the edge right here, You'll see that we've got that opening right there and this is where we're gonna be turning our oven mitt inside out in just a minute. Now at this point, you should have two sewn pieces. We've got the outside right here with the insole bright and then we also have our little lining piece and the lining should have the little opening on the side. Now, before we sew these two things together, we need to make a couple of little divots along the edge. Whenever you make a curved edge on a piece of sewing, it really helps to take a couple of divots out of the edge. So I like to go through and I take my scissors and just make sure that you don't cut that seam that sewed these two together. But I like to go through and just cut a couple of little triangles if you've ever sewn patterns before, a lot of times they've got divots along the edges of curved pieces. This is really, really helpful for making sure that your oven bit is usable and flexible when you use it. So we're gonna go ahead and just kinda, I like to go every inch or so and just cut a couple of little divots around the edge. And I'll do this with the lining and the outside. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna cut these up and I'll show you what they look like at the end. Thank you. 
Now that our oven mitt is right side out, we're ready to attach the lining to the outside. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your lining and you're basically going to put it on your oven mitt like a glove. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of shimmy this over our oven mitt. So once you've gotten your lining on top of your outside fabric, it'll look a little bit weird because you've got your lining out here and you're kind of like, what's going on? I have found that putting my hand inside can really help make sure that the thumb and the hand are lined up properly. But what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be sewing the lining onto the outside and we're gonna be sewing this bottom seam right here. Now, if you would like to add a loop to the edge of your oven mitt, just like this, if you wanna hang it up and use it, this is the part where you're gonna sew that loop in. Now what I've done is I've grabbed a little piece of connecting threads ribbon, and I'm gonna go ahead and just fold it in half, and you can pick wherever you would like that little loop to be. I always like one of the edges right here, so I like to line it up with the seam of the front and back, so it's a little tough to see, but we're gonna slide this in between the two layers. So in between the outside and the lining. And what I like to do is I like to make sure that I pin that in place. It can get a little squidgy when you're in the sewing machine. And so making sure that this is in place with a pin will be really helpful. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pin along the edge just to make sure everything stays in place. And we're gonna sew this bottom seam right here. Now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be sewing about a quarter inch off the bottom edge of these two together. I like to pat it just a smidge. So if you're gonna go a little over or under a quarter inch, always go a little bit over a quarter inch with this. And then very slowly, we're gonna sew around the edge here. It's a little tough because you have to kind of slide this onto your sewing machine. And so sometimes it's a little hard to turn. So go nice and slow and take it easy. We go ahead and drop and we'll go ahead and start sewing. Now that we've sewn this bottom edge right here, this is where the magic happens. This little opening that we had in the lining right there, this is where we're gonna be pulling it inside out. So it's gonna take a minute, and it'll take a little bit of work, but we're gonna go ahead and pull the outside oven mitt through the lining here. And through that, we're also gonna be turning the lining back so that you can see the right side. So this also can take a little bit of a minute, especially with that thumb area, it can be a little tough. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of shake that out. And now we've got our lining and our outside. And you'll notice right here, we've got our little connecting threads ribbon at the edge. So the last step is going to be closing out our lining and turning this inside out. So to close out the lining, it's actually really easy I like to just fold over about a quarter of an inch, and then I like to go ahead and just sew directly on top of the fabric. Remember that this is lining, so we do not need to worry about this looking extra pretty. If you do want it to look extra pretty, you can hand sew this closed. I'm just gonna sew right on top of it. Then we're gonna be pushing the lining inside, and I like to sew a little bit of a quarter inch line right on the edge because this is gonna help keep the lining in place. So let's go ahead and sew up our lining and then I'll show you how to stick it inside and then sew that little bottom area. Now, if you're gonna machine sew this little lining, you'll notice that I just pinned over a little bit of a quarter inch. I like to just sew as close to the edge as possible right here. If you're gonna hand sew it, you won't have to worry about this. But remember, this is a lining. So this is gonna go on the inside of your oven mitt. So a little bit of sewing on the edge being shown is not a bad thing. So we're gonna go ahead and sew this edge real quick.
All right, so there's our little lining area and you can trim your threads whenever you're ready. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our lining and we're gonna push it inside of our oven mitt. So I've gone ahead and I pinned right over here. I'm just gonna sew a little quarter inch around the edge, just like we did when we sewed the lining to the outside fabric. I've kind of slid it onto my sewing machine. I found that this really helps me go nice and slow so that this seam looks really nice and crisp. So let's go ahead and drop that and we'll sew. And now you have your finished oven mitt. This is the one that we created today. I'm pretty much in love with it. It goes along with the many, many others that I have made for myself and my friends and family. Um, I love the strips of this one. So many thank yous to the sewers at Connecting Threads who had these really fun scraps that I got to play with. And this operetta fabric does such a nice job working as an oven mitt. It just, the colors are absolutely beautiful. And I have to say, this is a very good use of that Connecting Threads ribbon that gets tied around all of our pre-cuts, which I think is a really fun usage. So if you weren't 100% sure what to do with it, this is a really great thing to do. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some of the elements of this that I can point out and make sure that I give you a couple of tips before you make your own oven mitt. So the number one thing is that you're gonna wanna make sure that you take the time to take those divots out of your lining piece and your outside batting pieces. That is what helps these curves stay nice and curvy. You'll also notice that I did very minimal stitching on this. I think it looks really nice, but if you ever wanna do more stitching, you wanna go a little bit crazier, just make sure that you have stitching within about an inch of each other. The last thing is, You'll notice that this seam right here, where the thumb meets the hand, it's a nice, tough, sturdy seam. The reason why we did that little line right down there is so that we could get a nice hard seam right here so that when you actually use your oven mitt, it's not gonna tear apart right there. So always make sure that you reinforce that little thumb seam, it makes a huge difference. And the last thing is always make sure that you do that last seam right along the edge with your lining and your outside fabric lined up together. This is gonna make sure that it reinforces the lining on the inside and your outside fabric on the outside. So those are all my favorite little tips for using your oven mitt. And that is how to make a scrappy oven mitt with me, Liz. I am so excited that you guys joined me today for this tutorial. It is an absolute joy to make these. And trust me, you are gonna bang out so many of these in one weekend. You're gonna be giving these away like candy for Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever you celebrate this year. So thanks again for coming. My name is Liz and I cannot wait to see you guys on our next video. <laughs> the first thing that I thought of was, my name is Liz LePage and I am confident but not arrogant. <laughs> Dueling of admits. <laughs>